So hello everyone, uh, today on, on, on the episode of Better Tech, we have Evira Blavi with us, uh, who works at Zesty. Am I pronouncing the name uh, correct? Is Zesty um, or? Zesty. Zesty, Zesty, yes. He works at Zesty, and we are going to understand today about his journey, uh, his work, what Zesty does, and and how they are kind of trying to disrupt the industry in, in their particular segment and what they feel about uh, the team building and ongoing trends in the industry. So everyone, welcome uh, on uh, on the show and uh, we hope to have a great conversation today. Thank you, thank you for having me. Wonderful. So everyone, why don't you go take the lead, go ahead, uh, help us understand who you are, a bit about your background and uh, how you landed over here and your role at Zesty. Great. So yes, I'll start. Um, so currently in the last year, uh, I'm the head of product enablement at Zesty. Um, that means that I'm leading um, all the things that related to the product, the connection between the sales organization and the product team, and of course, R&D, um, including uh, company strategy, um, dealing with very large customers um, before Zesty. Um, I spent almost five years at AWS, uh, which is the cloud division of uh, Amazon. Um, I worked there as a technical account manager, um, uh, working with very large customers in EMEA um, and also in uh, US. Uh, before that, I co-founded a startup, a storage, cloud storage startup uh, that was called Disk on Cloud. Um, and before that, I was a VMware specialist uh, for five years, and even before that, six years uh, in the Israeli army as an um, IT expert. Um, yeah, that's me in general. Okay. Uh, okay. So what, what made you move from Amazon uh, Web Services as a technical account manager to a head of product role at Zesty? Wow, that's like the most common question for me in the last year. Uh, everyone really anxious to, to, to know why anxious to to know why I moved from the giant tech giant uh, AWS to a small no, I'm, startup. I'm, I'm, I'm all for working at startups <laughs> and uh, making things happen. But just curious that everyone has an interesting story of their own. What made you move? Uh, so so I guess it's a combination of you. Um, a few uh, reasons. Uh, the first one, COVID. Okay, working from home was very hard for me. Um, more than two years at home. Uh, offices were open, but no one came. It's like a global thing at Amazon. And I really wanted to move to a small company, which, you know, still we have COVID, uh, quarantines, everything is closed. That's fine. But still, you know, small company uh, with open office. That's the first reason. The second reason I think, which is much more uh, impactful, um, I wanted to go back to a startup company again. Of course, this time not as a founder. Um, and I wanted to join um, a place where I can um, help the company to grow. Okay, when I joined Zesty, uh, had around 75 employees. Today we are 140, something like that. Um, and I think that I have much value uh, because of um, my expertise in cloud financial management, which is the realm that Zesty is, uh, you know, uh, working. Um, and uh, since I knew the founders uh, since the beginning, since day one, when they established the company, uh, I uh, talked with them and uh, was happy to join. And I'm really enjoying the time there. So. Wonderful, wonderful. And uh, uh, now, the, before we move on to Zesty, what is the kind of breakup uh, right now in your company? I mean, in terms of uh, from moving from 75 to 140, is it more of engineering folks, product folks, or what kind of uh, people you end up hiring in the last couple of years? So uh, Zesty is four years old in January. Um, so I guess it's a combination of both. Um, we grow evenly in, in terms of percentage uh, in R&D and uh, sales. Um, though we have a bit more than 
50% sales, meaning uh, the company is almost 50-50, but I think that we have a bit more salespersons and um, uh, mainly around uh, building uh, customer success and uh, uh, support, which uh, you need, it's really required when the business is growing. Um, and uh, yeah, definitely the last year was like uh, exponential growth for us. And the previous year was also uh, um, 800% growth. So uh, yeah, definitely we, we believe that customer is the most important thing. We need to have very good relations with customers, um, mutual discussions, uh, feedback, and definitely uh, I, I do believe that customer um, relations is super important. So um, that's the also investing tons of time and people um, that take care of our customers. Wonderful. And let's talk about what what does uh, Zesty, I mean, what, what, do, what do you guys do at Zesty? Wow. So, oh, so the pitch of Zesty is very, uh, uh, let's say, I, I really like it because uh, what we do or the reason that um, the two founders of Zesty um, started the journey um, is to make DevOps life much easier. What does okay. it mean? Okay, DevOps is like a very common role today. 10 years ago, yeah. we called it IT experts or right. um, Linux admins maybe or something like that. And um, mostly what we see in the industry are customers or companies that move to the cloud, public cloud, AWS, GCP, Azure, which is great, which is great. You have tons of agility. Um, you, you're able to uh, onboard your software or your application in days or maybe weeks, um, but then comes the bill. <laughs> um, and Zesty founders identified a very simple thing that no one, at, at least no, no DevOps engineers, at least DevOps engineers do, do not like to do, okay? Um, and it's mainly uh, babysitting the cloud. Um, the last three years in the world, like COVID and the recession that we have now, um, impacted uh, financial um, results for, I think, almost every company in the world. Um, and what we do at Zesty, we have a platform that helps DevOps engineers uh, to manage their cloud costs. And of course, um, our first product commitment manager helps them to manage their commitments to their cloud provider. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, since then we have additional products, but the, the let's say uh, major product that we sell today um, helps organization to save money on the cloud uh, in just a matter of days without doing anything. So, I mean, I, I, I spoke to some of the founders before, and, and before we move on to that, are the Zesty's founder, are they kind of by any chance DevOps guys themselves who spotted this opportunity or, uh, I mean, what's their story? Yeah, so so the CTO, Alexei, was a head of DevOps in a, in a company. Um, he understands the ecosystem of AWS in extremely good way. Um, and he understood and interviewed many companies and asked them, okay, so how do you manage your commitments um, to, to your cloud provider? And they told, told him back, we don't, or either we do, but very not efficiently. Um, and then he understood that, okay, um, no one identified the problem in the industry. Um, there is a big pain that involves uh, with tons of money that is being spent on the cloud. Um, something like 35% out of the spend in the cloud is a waste. Um, and if we will deliver a product that gives fully autonomous, fully automatic solution uh, for, the, for the customer with zero risk, um, I think that it will work perfectly. Um, and then I met Maxim and Alexei a month before the company established. They showed me their mock. I remember that. Um, they met me as an industry expert. Um, and I told them after 25 seconds, okay, that will work. Good work. Go ahead and start. You will be able to sell it very quickly. I mean, mm -hmm. sell the product, of course. Um, and that's what happened. They established the company in January 2019. Um, raised the uh, seed money a few months after, um, then round A and 
recently around B. Um, and yeah, definitely there is a perfect market fit for the product. Uh, the timing was just on time. Uh, yeah, so, so that's how it works. So, I mean, is this just AWS specific or you work with uh, uh, multiple clouds? So we have plans with Commitment Manager to add additional uh, providers mm -hmm. very soon. Um, we have additional products um, that's called Zesty Disk. Uh, what we do with Zesty Disk is shrinking and expanding um, volumes, cloud storage, meaning if you have an EC2 instance, for example, in AWS, you attach to it storage, local storage, hard drives, like we all know from, you know, uh, from the traditional IT. Um, and we identified that there is no solution in the market that helps you to save costs of storage of, of volumes, of virtual machines volumes. Um, and in that manner, we do multi-cloud. We do also um, Azure, not only AWS. Um, and we see tremendous numbers, like more than 50% uh, off discount, or let's say savings uh, of EBS volume spend with very large customers um, that spends multi-millions of dollars on EBS every year. Um, yet again, we do believe in a platform that is not asking from the customer to change things, okay? It should be seamlessly. Zero application change. And of course, everything should remain native, meaning you don't switch your storage solution. You still use EBS volumes or um, Azure volumes in Azure, which is great. We add um, an extra uh, level of management. We take control, autopilot of your EBS volumes. And that's all. Um, so uh, yes, definitely, we are going uh, to multiple clouds for sure. That's okay. And I'm, I mean, have you seen? I mean, I've, I've spoke to other founders who are in a similar space, uh, which is helping you optimize your cloud spending budget. So I mean, are you guys unique in certain aspect, or is it you're you're now becoming part of a crowded space, which is trying to do the same? I mean, on Amazon, you get. I mean, if you're an enterprise, there's high chance that you have a lot of unused instances there. You have storage, which you're never using. And so a lot of companies, they, have, they consistently, they have their tools uh, consistently monitor the usage and then they figure out the patterns. And then based on that, they, they really tell you how you can really optimize the cost or even can go a step or two ahead by doing an autopilot shutting down or switching on spawning new stuff. So is there a kind of something unique to Zesty as compared to some of these other providers uh, right now? So so first, Zesty is not a monitoring tool. Like um, there, there are many players in the market that gives you visibility for cost, right. which is great by the way, because it's needed and it's like a red ocean already, Cloud Health and other products do that for many years and do it very good, I must say. Okay, as a TAM in AWS, I saw all the products, believe me, great work. What Zesty is doing is different because we are not giving the customer recommendations, okay? We buy the commitments, the reservations for the customer with one month commitment instead of three years commitment. Uh, we change your volumes. We are not asking you for permissions, okay? We do that automatically. Of course, we need to uh, keep the performance um, and stability and reliability of your system as it, as it was before the using Zesty. Um, so um, I do believe that Zesty um, taking different approach because giving the DevOps again a recommendation tool, which is great by the way, that that's, makes sense. Um, compared to automatic solution, it's like, um, five years or 10 years dif differentiation in technology. Okay, the concept of trust me, I can do whatever I tell you I do mm -hmm. with zero risk um, is much better offering because the value of automatic solution is giving spare hours for DevOps. Okay, they can go on earlier. They can focus on their business. They can build their product on the cloud or any other place. Um, and uh, we, we do see it. We have hundreds of customers right now um, and we see the value. Okay, I'm talking with many uh, VPs, head of cloud infrastructures, 
DevOps leaders, and they tell me, wow, I don't care about uh, commitments anymore. You do all the work for me. 100% coverage, almost 100% coverage. Wow, I could never do done that before. Okay. And at what size of a company you believe that just solution become relevant? I mean, how much a cloud spend or cloud infrastructure and usage before you guys become a viable for any company? So, so we have a rule of thumb that uh, $7,000 a month uh, is the minimum. Mm -hmm. Though we have customers that spend hundreds of millions uh, a year. So, so I guess that uh, startups that has more than, I don't know, 50, 70 employees are a good um, start for us. Okay. Um, specifically the, those that grow very fast because then they don't have to predict um, what will happen next year or in two years. Uh, think about that you build your application now and you need to decide how many instances you need in order to buy commitments. Okay, you need to buy, I don't know, 10 instances, 10 virtual machines. With Zesty, we buy the commitment and we can sell it when you don't need it. That, that's the concept. Sure. And if we weren't able to sell it on time, we pay you back the money that you lost, mm -hmm. like insurance. Okay. Um, and this offering is kind of different because we have a machine learning algorithm that tells us when to sell the commitments and when to buy them. Same for Zesty Disk. We have deep learning algorithm that helps us to decide when to increase the capacity and when to shrink it. So um, we are very confident with our solution, with our algorithm. Hence, we can give you buyback guarantee or insurance. Mm -hmm. um, and I think this is the main differentiator between Zesty and the competition. There is competition, of course. It's like a very large market. Um, yeah, that, that's all basically. Okay. Now coming to your daily life, you are kind of a head of product over here. So, I mean, tell us more about how you manage your teams, what work you do, how you manage your product and all that. Uh, have you gone on to uh, manage remote teams uh, with this COVID? You still believe in local in-house teams? How how you go about that? So I'm uh, head of product enablement, meaning I'm not leading the product in R&D, but I'm, I do work with them very closely. Um, okay. The director of product and myself talk like every day. Um, and I'm uh, actually have two hats at Zesty. The first one is the product enablement. Um, and the other one is the cloud operations. Um, we do have a team that helps do things that um, need to be done manually. Okay. Um, there are some requests from customers. Um, hey, we are going to change this. The algorithm can never know that in advance. Okay, we need to, uh, let's say, stop the algorithm, do things manually. It happens from time to time. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm leading uh, many people. All of them are local uh, still. Um, we, we recently opened uh, an office in the US. I guess that not all of my employees will remain local uh, very soon. Um, uh, yeah, but definitely we have like hybrid mode, um, three days at the office, two days at home. Um, and I do believe that uh, we need this mixture after we get used to work from home for many years. Um, and I think that the family, uh, my family at least, uh, is used to, to see me every day, almost every day in a, reason, a reasonable hour. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so I have I have two small kids, um, and it's like very helpful to be at home. I think that it, before COVID, it was extremely hard to be at home almost every day in a reasonable hour. Um, and yeah, also for my employees, I tell them, okay, you need work-life balance, and it's not a buzzword for me. It's really important for me that you go home early, at least once a week when you're in the office. And of course, if you're at home, it's easier. Um, and, uh, I, I think that's like uh, the company mantra. I think that we believe that employee that is working too many hours a day, eventually will leave. Um, yeah. I think that, um, yeah, it's not, I, I think that we focus on quality of work. So, um, my cloud operations team started with a very long days at the beginning, like eight hours, nine hours of working. And we improve it with like a very good tools that we built internally. 
um, and we uh, help them to finish their work in five hours, not nine hours. Sure, sure. While we grow the amount of customers um, in 100% of the time. So it's like 200% improvement in three, four months of uh, internal tooling uh, development, uh, which is great. Uh, so, so how does the product enablement roles work? Uh, if you can help us a little bit understand more. So, so product enablement does not have tools, uh, mainly uh, knowledge transfer to the company. Uh, we do, um, you know, weekly trainings for the uh, CRO group, which is the chief revenue uh, group, uh, or you can call it the sales uh, department. Uh, we do, uh, I do have many interactions with uh, strategic customers, uh, with strategic partners of us. Uh, meaning, uh, of course, like every SaaS company, we, ha we have two channels of sales. Um, I do uh, also um, prioritize product uh, features, okay, um, that come from the field. And uh, th that's the way we do. Uh, we are using many collaboration tools, of course. Notion, Monday, and all of these are very useful uh, for a startup. And all the tools that we build is like, uh, we are not reinventing the wheel. We use um, third parties, uh, collaboration tools, uh, very, I'm a big believer of um, operations, very uh, strict uh, run books, mm -hmm. um, learning from mistakes. It takes me at least, I spend at least five hours a week or even six hours a week to investigate issues understand the root cause and how to fix them with a process or either with a product change, which is also uh, an option in a startup company. Uh, wonderful. So and coming to the last question of this podcast, uh, which is essentially, how do you see the tech landscape unfolding in the next year, a couple of years uh, in your, and, and how this recession is treating startups in your opinion? Wow, so recession is like a big topic recently. Um, yeah. but, but I do see that um, if we're talking about the cloud management uh, industry or the automation industry, definitely many products will go to fully automation or at least near fully automation, which means it's like a Tesla car when you have almost self-driving car. Um, I do believe that management of infrastructure will become automatically eventually. Um, it's just a matter of, I think, months, if uh, uh, months or maybe two years from now, um, we are going to have um, many solutions that will automate things from containers up until commitments that are already there. And, um, and the recession. Okay, so I talked with many enterprises around the globe recently, and we see the recession impacting them um, there is a lot of pressure from management and board uh, for these companies um, to save money, to save costs, right. but not in a month or two, today, yesterday. It's like, uh, if we are not going to save additional amount of money today, or in, let's say, days from now, we won't be here and you won't be here as well. So it's like, um, I think that the recession is changing the pace of adopting new technologies. Mm -hmm. I do see the recession improve uh, operations. And of course the recession is doing great for Zesty, I must say that, but uh, it's like very sad statement here now, but- uh, um, You're our saying business is for them already, yeah. Yeah, so, so we, we, we changed uh, the bottom line for customers in a matter of days. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I, I'm really happy to, to be like, the one that helps customer to, to change their bottom line or to improve their bottom line and maybe save people works. You know, uh, employees won't be fired or at least they will uh, cut less employees because of that. Um, again, I'm not really controlling the debt in, uh, uh, in companies, but I do help them to uh, improve without changing anything. So um, I think that's a great success for us. Another thing that the recession is doing um, is changing priorities. I think that priority A today is not like uh, um, like it was like a year ago. Um, cost optimization is a top priority. We see it everywhere on every call. 
And we are asking the customer, okay, why you called us? Why you entered our website and ask for a demo? And the answer is dramatically different than a year ago, okay? If, it, if last year, if you ask the same question, they will tell you, okay, I want to save, I have a KPI to save some cost. Uh, we don't really want to manage reservations and today the, the pitch is different. Hi, I need to save yesterday. Please help me do that now. I heard some reviews. I saw that you are doing that very well. Let's start, how we start. And um, it's like a game changer for the industry. So thank you very much. We understand this. And I, I think you hit it on the head that uh, corporates and our enterprises, they are now pressed to save money now rather than tomorrow and uh, or in a month or two. So, and I guess that your product is right there at the right time in the right space. So I think, uh, are you guys going to grow? So, so wonderful. Thank you everyone for being our guest today. Uh, it's wonderful talking to you and all the best uh, uh, wishes for Zesty and, and the company's growth. Uh, we hope to have you again on our show and in a few months to understand how you guys are still progressing. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Have a wonderful day.